Most of the time, wrestling just involves two or more people getting inside of the squared circle and using their skills to achieve victory. The WWE, though, often uses other means to create some truly incredible moments. Here are 10 best stunts in WWE history. Don't forget to drop an elbow on that subscribe button and join the notification club. Edge goes to hell. Just look at that title, Edge goes to hell. Sounds like a horror movie, doesn't it? Well, do we have to say more? Eh, well, I guess we do. At SummerSlam 2008, The Undertaker finally got his long-awaited revenge on Edge. After months of dealing with sneak attacks, political manipulation, and other shenanigans, Edge's libido got the best of him. This put him on the wrong side of Vicky Guerrero's wrath. Sure, she couldn't actually beat up Edge, but as SmackDown general manager, she could definitely put him in a match versus The Undertaker. These two beat the tar out of each other until Taker finally put him away with a tombstone. Sensing that it had been a while since he killed another man, Undertaker brought out a ladder and lifted Edge to the top of it and choke slammed him through the ring. Then he summons the flames of the fall team to burn Edge alive. Don't be concerned, he came back in November sans burn marks. Ah, we love you WWE, you send someone to eternal damnation only to have them come back in a few months. What a ride. Who said that every stunt had to be an incredible display of physics defying brutality? Sometimes it just looks cool, like Shawn Michaels' entrance for his iconic Iron Man match versus Bret Hart at WrestleMania 12. As Michaels' music hit, the Heartbreak Kid didn't come out, but his trainer Jose Lothario did. Right on cue, heel commentator Jerry Lawler theorized that Michaels chickened out. Instead, Lothario pointed to the rafters and there was Shawn Michaels, clad in white, coming to the floor on a zip line. On commentary, Vince McMahon reacted like a child being told that Santa was real, practically peeing his pants. Well, that would predate the actual time he peed, but we digress. The ultra quotable, unbelievable, what a ride, lives on in WWE sound bites to this day. So after that amazing entrance, surely Brett Hart must have an equal amazing entrance, right? Yeah, well, he just walked to the ring like any normal match. Jeez, no wonder Hart is so angry all the time. Beer bath. So unless you're straight edge like CM Punk, being covered in beer doesn't seem like that bad of a time. Somehow though, the corporation sold getting doused in beer like Superman taking a kryptonite shower. In the buildup to WrestleMania 15, Stone Cold and The Rock were firing on all cylinders to make up for an otherwise lackluster mania. 1999 was also the peak of the Attitude Era insanity. So when you combine those two elements, you get Stone Cold almost knocking off the Titan Tron with a beer truck, cutting a killer promo, and then proceeding to make Vince McMahon swim in beer. To be honest, the whole thing doesn't last very long at all, but the crowd becomes unglued at the visual and it has stuck with fans as a defining moment of wrestling's hottest period. You know how you can tell that Stone Cold really didn't like the corporation here? He sprayed them down with Coors Light. If he sprayed them down with Guinness, then maybe that's a different story. Hey, what if Austin came back and sprayed somebody down with his Broken Skull IPA beer? Huh, just giving you ideas, WWE. Getting dumped. Somehow, we don't see this as being the last of Mick Foley on the list. But for now, let's talk about the time he and Terry Funk got way too close to each other. The New Age Outlaws may not have been exactly new, as both Billy Gunn and Road Dogg had been in the company for years. But by late 1997, they finally achieved grand popularity. This was the Attitude Era, after all, where bad guys were cool and old school good guys were looked on as lame. Trying to do everything they could to get heat, the Outlaws tied the lid atop a dumpster that Terry Funk and Mick Foley found themselves in. Eh, don't ask, and push them off the stage. JR then rightfully exclaims, By God, there's people in there! But did anyone in the audience care? Mm, no, they were cheering regardless. What makes this moment funny in retrospect is that seconds earlier when Foley dove into the dumpster, you can see packing peanuts fly out of it. But JR's commentary, Funk and Foley selling, did such a good job convincing us that we bought it. Triple H and a forklift. We all know Triple H loves him his golden shovel. Used to lift up dirt and bury people, the shovel is a great tool. But you know what also lifts things up yet Triple H hates? Forklifts. Well, you'd hate them too if you almost died from one. At Survivor Series 2000, Stone Cold finally got his revenge on Triple H for his, um, automotive troubles one year earlier? How do you pay back someone trying to take away your life? Well, by doing the same to them, obviously. Austin, though, did it with more pizzazz than the game. Triple H merely instructed Rikishi to run down the rattlesnake. Stone Cold operated a forklift while Triple H was in a car, lifted the car high in the air, and then flipped it with him supposedly in it. And then the show ended. No, 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 WWE, you cannot end a show like that and not tell us what the heck we just saw. Oh, wait, Triple H was only out for a few weeks? Huh, well, there's that darn Triple H again, refusing to job to death itself. All right, midway point, time for a quiz. Who is the innovator of one of wrestling's original aerial moves, the flying headbutt? Stay tuned for the answer. Off the edge.
WrestleMania 17 was an event that truly had it all. If you wanted the main event to end all main events, you had it. If you want technical wrestling at its finest with Kurt Angle, you got it. If you wanted sheer mayhem, oh boy did you get it. There's a reason why TLC2 is considered to be the benchmark in TLC matches to this day. The tag teams involved were at the peak of their popularity and the event was hyped like never before. And the participants were firing on all cylinders. The crescendo of this match came when Edge ascended up a, well, these are JR's words, not ours, a 20-foot ladder. Now, we doubt it's a 20-footer. We will say that when Edge locked on to a defenseless Jeff Hardy, an iconic moment was born. Diving onto him like anti-aircraft missile, Edge leapt off the ladder and speared Hardy all the way down to the ring. Upon touching down, Edge raised his head to seemingly whip his hair up and then collapsed alongside Hardy. Crazy to think that this is more memorable than any other spot in the match, but it just is. Cracking ladders. You didn't think that Jeff Hardy would forget that paycheck that Edge cut him back in 2001, did you? Sure, he might have taken enough illicit substances and taken enough chair shots to down an elephant, but his memory of that was plenty sharp six years later at WrestleMania 23. Just as the TLC match was seen as the next evolutionary step for the ladder match, the money in the bank was the next phase after TLC. With that comes bigger stakes, bigger names, and bigger spots, like this one. Late into the match, Edge had been incapacitated enough by his own own tag partner Randy Orton to be placed on a ladder outside of the ring by Matt Hardy. Matt being the smart brother and always letting Jeff do the crazy stuff signaled to Jeff crush kill, destroy. Jeff obliged like always and crash landed straight through the torso of Edge, taking him out of the match for good. I think if you turned up the audio enough, you can hear Jeff say, totally worth it. Unconfirmed on that last part though. Foley crashes. You knew it, I knew it, everybody in the universe knew that it was going to be on this list. But what did you want? A Russo swerve? sometimes predictable doesn't mean bad. Not that anything about this hot June night in Pittsburgh was predictable. Heck, the Hell in a Cell match between Mankind and The Undertaker starts off bizarrely. Foley begins the match by climbing, struggling mightily to do it, but pulling it off nonetheless, waiting for The Undertaker. That was the first and only mistake Taker needed as he pummeled him atop the cell and threw him off, sending him like a deranged meteor crashing into Earth. Not content with trying to destroy himself once, Foley then climbed up the cell once again, only to have Undertaker choke slam him through the top of the cell. That first one was planned, that second one was not. Unsurprisingly, the unplanned stunt was the one that hurt Foley much worse, despite the shorter distance to fall. A chair hitting you in the mouth on your way down will mess your evening, you know? We don't know if it was worth it for Foley, but we damn sure appreciate the big man's effort. Breaking new ground. Ah, 2003. A time where Brock Lesnar was on WWE television every week, John Cena was a heel, and where you could put Big Show in the main event without it feeling weird. That was a good time. By 2003, WWE was fully on board with the idea of having Brock Lesnar as their guy for years to come. As such, they went out of their way to make Lesnar seem like the biggest badass the company had ever seen, and to his credit, Lesnar played it pretty convincingly. Just another phase of the plan here was to have Lesnar superplex the 500-pound Big Show off the top rope. That alone would have been an incredible spot, but that wasn't enough for Vinny Mac. For the first time ever, the WWE collapsed the entire ring the second Big Show and Lesnar hit the canvas. Referee Mike Chioda took a tumble to the mat, and the announcers rightfully reacted like they just saw Vince McMahon say he was going to send Roman Reigns to NXT. Hey, now that we mention it, would that be the worst thing? Shane McMahon, period. When it comes to the boss's son, pick a card, any card. Seriously, Shane McMahon's list of daredevil acrobatics is making Matt Murdock feel self-conscious. It all started at SummerSlam 2000, where Shane McMahon took on the legendary Steve Blackman? All right, maybe he wasn't the biggest name, but that didn't matter to Blackman, as he whacked McMahon hard enough to send him hurling from the top of the SummerSlam stage to the floor. Once the floodgates were open, everything came rushing through. Less than a year later, Shane jumped from his own free will off an even higher stage at Backlash 2001. Then he did it again at Unforgiven 2003. Several other crazy bumps were would follow, but then at WrestleMania 32, Shane played the grand finale. Well, for now, anyway. He jumped off the top of the Hell in a Cell onto The Undertaker and stole the show. And just because God has a sense of humor, Shane made an emergency landing from his helicopter just a few months ago. Never change, Shane. Never change. And while it isn't quite a Shane O'Mac leap, the flying headbutt is still pretty cool. Who created it? Why, none other than Parley Race. And that's it for our list. What are some other stunts that we left out? Maybe Shane McMahon took a leap from the moon to earth in between the time we made this video and posted it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to The Sportster for more awesome videos. See ya!